What's up, you guys? Sean Ross Sapp. Welcome to Fightful. It is June 24th, 2023. And one week after I said I wouldn't be here every week, here I am hosting this collision show. Uh, Ricky Tino will be back next week. I'll be in London next week. We're, we're going to have tons of stuff to talk about next week because there's Grapsity, there's Money in the Bank. Then, of course, there's Collision. But you know what? We're here to talk Collision. I got a bunch of backstage news for you guys. I was just overwhelmed with the positivity surrounding the panel that we selected. We've got Iridian here with us. How you doing? I'm doing so wonderful, especially after you said that. So thank you so much. It was. It was It was fantastic reception. Uh, we got Cresta here. Cresta, how you doing? Uh, you you have went you've underwent makeovers like just from the time that you <laughs> logged onto this stream. I'm molting. I tried to fit into the cover um Rick's Lost Soul so people wouldn't know the difference, but uh much like always with the post show, my mustache comes off every five seconds. So wow. Well, uh, I got some good news for you guys. This show, this post show is gonna be ad free. Uh, no ad reads during this show. This is brought to you by Fightful Select. If you want to support us, head over to FightfulSelect.com. Best $5 in the business. You will hear a couple plugs and a couple of me patting myself on the back there. But if you want to support this show, you want to get your question or statement in, leave a super chat here at YouTube.com slash Fightful. That is what sort of guides our show. It determines what we spend the most time talking about. Also, you can go to humperchats.com. You might say, what in the hell is a humper chat? What is a humper? That's a double entendre, my friends. Uh, a camel is our mascot. And yes, we are talking about a match humping, uh, alluding to things that you would perhaps hump because it's fun. Anyway, humperchats.com, that allows you to leave your question or statement before we go on the air, which is pretty beneficial considering we're on the air every day now. Uh, and I'm not talking just about these post shows. I'm talking about Grapsity, The Spotlight, Listen Your Boy, Wrestling Perspective Podcast has Kylie Ray on this Monday. Uh, you know, the host of Wrestling Perspective Podcast just casually hit me a couple of weeks ago with the, uh, yeah, uh, Sean, by the way, Ace Steel's hosting this show for the next month. And I go, huh? What? Ace Steel's hosting our show. What? How did that get approved? And he goes, they'll just let him do whatever he wants at this point. They're just paying him. All right, cool. So we got that going on. Support. Leave a thumbs up. We would greatly appreciate it. We are here to talk collision. Cresta, how are you feeling about this show? I liked it from top to bottom. And honestly, that last match, who cares what happened in the ring? The crowd told the story. Holy crap. That was Don Callis, Dominic Mysterio levels of heat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was it was good team. stuff. Iridium, what did you think? I mean, we we would see the tweets a little bit before mm. it went on the air that every time Punk was popping up on that screen, he was getting booed. And you know what? I am right there with you, Cresta. I was more intrigued by the crowd than I was by a lot of the things that were happening in the ring. And I was mm. all for the booze. I was a thousand percent here for it. People were saying CM Punk and then people were saying sucks. It was very reminiscent of John Cena back in the day. And I mean, I guess John Cena still to this day because people will still chant <laughs> that. So that was literally insane. That crowd had so much energy. I loved yes. it. So I'll tell you something that I loved about this show and uh, I'll keep my thoughts on this show kind of succinct. I'll be here more to, to sort of guide the way and give some backstage news, but this show very clearly visually takes a lot of cues from WCW Nitro. However, the open of this show took a cue from Saturday night's main event back in the nineties, back in the day, we opened with these promos backstage of bullet club gold of CMFT Ricky, all talking about the night's main event. Iridian, I like this approach. It was it was pretty cool. I felt like it was a good compromise because I know that one side of the broadcast, whether it be AEW or WBD, one prefers it starting with action, one prefers a promo. This was a, a little bit of both, I felt. Yeah, and you know what? That's very interesting that you mentioned that because I was in the other room as soon as the promo started happening, and I was listening, and I'm like, wait, wait, did the show start? What happened? The music hasn't played yet. So I ran myself to the other room, and I'm like, oh, they're cutting promos. That's really, really cool. And I think that it's something different and it gets you hyped before the show. Even just 
couple minutes before the show starts, seconds even. This was really different, and I think that they should keep this going forward because I thought it was really cool. Cressa, this is a lot like the the much beloved Mark Henry enough of the talk type of thing. I think this could become like sort of a quirky type of thing that they have to open up the show that we all love and look forward to. I don't hate it, but I do like it being like a mixed bag. I think some days it could start with a match. Some days it could start with a promo or even like um, a backstage leading into it's time for the main event. And it started Saturday night. Like, mm -hmm. welcome to Saturday Night Live, if you will. I liked it. I liked it. But I do, I do think there is space for them to open up hot with a match, too. Love that they did this. Really, really did. Uh, B Mandible sends a very generous super chat. Thank you so much. Says the show is special, like the introduction of Saturday night's main event. Raw and Nitro is new concepts. Within six months, this show will be the industry standard. Beautiful blending of modern wrestling and old school feel. I mean, one of the things that I have noticed specifically about this show, a lot of the typical detractors of AEW, especially within the wrestling world, are like, yeah, I'm kind of digging this show. Like Eric Bischoff was over the moon about Collision last week. I saw Dutch Mantel, who I usually don't really give a shit what he has to say, saying, this feels like it was written by somebody completely different. Now, I haven't heard that whatsoever, but we are seeing a lot of the typical detractors that are like, hmm, I'm going to give this show a chance. And I think, Cresta, that's not such a bad thing if you've got people in AEW that can sort of serve an athletic audience on one night and serve more of a traditional sports entertainment audience on another night. I think it's kind of cool that they have people wondering that. If you're watching wrestling, you're doing it right. So the fact that they can bring in more people, I hope that this does lead to what they were doing in the very beginning when they were doing interpromotional. I am an impact show, so I would love for them to get eyes again on impact and work with some of those stars. But if that's what's going to bring you in because it's different, come on in, just watch wrestling. You know what I mean? So I like it. I think that it's great that people who are like, eh, 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 are now like, <laughs> okay, maybe you got me. Maybe you got me. You got me, gal. Iridian, I know a lot of this doesn't even register with a lot of fans, but being in the line of work that I'm in, a lot of this stuff registers with me and because I'm consuming so much content. Do you see like a distinct difference between these two, like Collision and Dynamite, or do you see one as an extension of the other? Oh, absolutely. I think they are very different. I feel like they might have tried in the beginning to say it was kind of an extension, but I feel like now week two, we can kind of see that collision is its own thing. Mm -hmm. And I like that people are finding it intriguing and people are tuning in and that people are saying that it's different because I think that it's different too. And I think going forward, this really has the potential to kind of be it's standalone thing. Like, yes, it is AW, but collision is what people want to watch. A reminder, guys, even in uh, future weeks when I'm not hosting the show, I will be popping on here and there at the top of the show to serve as an insider. Uh, but today we've got a different insider. Cresta just can't get rid of this guy. <laughs> Hi, we got, friends. Joel Pearl. We got Joel Pearl. <laughs> Joel Pearl, our roving reporter on the scene in toronto as is kate as well so uh very very glad to have you all there of course denise is there although she serves that in in a freelance capacity i'm headed to london next week we got joel in toronto this week i was in lexington last week fightful all over the map joel what did you think as you uh turn your you did a barrel roll on the screen there <laughs> i had to fix myself because otherwise y'all were just gonna see my fingers in the middle of the camera yeah, we still see your fingers. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, but it's different now. I'm just holding up the microphone so it gets a little closer. Come on. What'd you think of the show there live? The show was really fun live and kind of blew by. Uh, even the Ring of Honor tapings were a lot of fun because you saw a lot of talent that you don't normally see on Ring of Honor, so that was cool. Uh, main event was long, but they told really good stories, and of course the crowd was into it. So overall, the show was a lot of fun. I love Tony Khan coming out before we went live. And saying this, you know, we did Dynamite in Toronto. We did Rampage in Toronto. And now for the first time ever, we're bringing Collision to Toronto. I heard about that. I had a good laugh over that. And of course, you know, it's control. So, yeah, overall, fun night, good night. People were really having fun. So was there a post-show match or anything? Did they film anything after Collision? Yeah, so uh, after the match, or after the show, so I guess it went off the air with the guns officially joining uh, Bullet Club Gold. And then uh, the baby faces came in, ran out, ran everyone out of the ring. They took off some of the uh, 
turnbuckle uh, pads so that they can get ready for Ring of Honor and threw them at the guns. And then a couple of the guns sold it really funnily. It's good stuff. And then they grabbed the mic and they all got a little promo time. So Dax grabs the mic and thanks everyone for Toronto NXT 2016 for their two out of three falls match with DIY. Said it put them on the map. Said it was uh, he was able to afford uh, a life for his family and his friends that he could never pay back otherwise. Cash said basically the same thing. Thanks everyone for a great career so far. Ricky thanked everyone and said, you know, you buy my merch, you support me, and I appreciate that very much. And then CM Punk gets the mic. And of course, if you were watching the show, you saw how he was uh, reacting to throughout the event. So he grabs the mic and Punk says, as the team captain, I will take this loss under my belt. I will take responsibility and I will learn from this loss. And as a result from this loss, I will learn and grow just like your Toronto Maple Leafs. You can guess how the crowd reacted to that. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I'm a Maple Leafs fan. I don't appreciate this whatsoever. It was completely just for you, Sean. I swear to God. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, let's talk about the biggest scoop you had for FightfulSelect.com. The managers of Iron Sheik and Virgil, the Megan brothers were there. Did they try to recruit you again, Joel? They did not try to recruit me again. They did go backstage for an extended amount of time. Who knows who they were trying to recruit and for what? But they were hanging out and just doing their thing. Um, I, I hope they're running your Twitter by the end of the week, Joel. Uh, we, we had, we had some of the, I think, Bushi, uh, Hiromu Takahashi, and, uh, I don't know who, I know El Desperado was in the ROH tapings. I was, I was literally typing up the Hiromu Takahashi is backstage article for Fightful Select. As, as he came out, I was like, no, (laughs) damn it. Five dollars. Why? But uh, it didn't end up happening. Anything else stand out on the show to you uh, that, that that you particularly thought was of note for the Toronto crowd? I Shingo. Mean, for, Shingo Takagi, Shingo, yeah, yeah. by the way. Uh, Christian Cage's promo got the crowd because, of course, Christian is from mm-hmm. Toronto, from Orangeville. And uh, he made another Leafs and Raptors dig, which, again, I didn't grow up in this city. I grew up in Ottawa, so... My titles have never been connected to an Ottawa team, uh, but it was fun, and everyone dug into it. Jericho did his uh, top of the show. I'm from Winnipeg, you idiot. People loved it. And uh, Tetsuya Naito got a really nice reception from the crowd. People were excited for that. Uh, How was Cash Wheeler after the match? Did he seem okay? He seemed fine. If anything, it was Ricky selling his leg, but I think he was just kind of just ginger. Everyone seemed fine. And even uh, uh, there was that one spot in the uh, Brody Lee, sorry, Brody uh, King and uh, Andrade match where Brody kind of deep, what did he do? He DVD'd him into the the turnbuckle and it looked like Andrade spiked his head. Death Valley driver into the corner in the middle of the match. Yep. Thank you, thank you. So uh, that looked really gross live, but then they showed the replay, and I was like, oh, he did a headstand. He looked okay. So they sold it well. The match was fantastic. Everyone had a really good time watching that one. Well, Joel, we hope that that either you or Kate will be able to join us tomorrow. We're going to have shows all over the map tomorrow. Rob Wilkins has a preview show on Select. Uh, Alex and Kate will have, or Alex will have a post show on Select. Alex has a post show on Select tonight. But myself and Julie Cutler will be here uh, tomorrow night after Forbidden Door. Joel, thank you so much. And uh, find something for Jimmy Van to pay for. I plan on it. By the way, just because I can, Kate and I will be live on Overbook tomorrow afternoon after Girls Next Door. We're going to be talking about that show. We'll talk about Collision and our experience. And, of course, preview Forbidden Door. So come check that out, FightfulOverbook.com. And uh, y'all have a good night. Cheers. Thank you, Joel. Bye, Joel. Thanks, guys. Always love having... (laughs) <laughs> always love having people actually on the scene able to check uh check us out with what whatever they've they've seen there at the show also as i mentioned fightfulselect.com on sunday it's a lot more than just wrestling news over 40 podcasts a month we have rob wilkins hosting the forbidden door pre-show at 2 p.m eastern so make sure you guys check that out man uh so th- I had mentioned that in, in the past or in the future, if something major happens on Rampage, it'll kind of be discussed here. And I think something major did happen on Rampage beyond John Morrison debuting as FightfulSelect.com uh, reported, best $5 in the business. Uh, Anthony Bowens 
did a promo that has went viral where Harley Cameron <laughs> hit on him. And he's like, uh, hey, lady, I'm gay. Uh, and Fightful Select broke some news today. We had had some details behind it. He was a little bit nervous about the line. QT Marshall talked to him. He's like, man, this is this is important. I know that a lot of people backstage like uh, explained to him the importance of this, and eventually he was on board, and obviously this worked out really, really well. I had the, the great fortune of doing a feature on Anthony Bowens over four years ago before he was in AEW, and when the acclaim started, it kind of looked like, uh-oh, he might get left in the dust. Like, because Max Caster has these raps. Now, Anthony Bowens is probably the best part of the act to me. Uh, Cresta, this is such a cool moment to see. And you could tell on Twitter when he was like, man, I had people chanting, he's gay in a positive way. That That is just so cool to see uh, this happen for Anthony Bowens. We talked about this earlier in my house because I went to performing arts high school and it's kind of one of those full circle moments where it's like where people used to use these things against you and now it empowers people are cheering for you you're being celebrated for it and also max caster is a ride or die because when he said it max caster jumped up all 10 toes and fingers in the air like yes that's my friend i loved it i thought it was so positive and plus we're in pride month i think it was a great positive message to everyone and honestly the segment itself was pretty good her rap wasn't that bad if we could accept max Cass's rap, was- her rap wasn't that bad I wanted to hate it so much, but then I heard it. I was like, it wasn't that bad. Like, I feel, I feel like it probably should have been worse. Like they, for the sake of the story, Iridian, Mm -hmm. her Mm -hmm. rap probably should have been just absolute dog shit. It should have been terrible, but you know what? I had to go back and watch this because I was there live and I couldn't hear anything. Chicago was booing her so loud. I was like, please guys, can we just just pause for one second so we can hear and then you can boo her after. Um, but that rap <laughs> I, it was not bad. It was not bad, but I am glad that I got to cheer. Also, he's gay. I thought it was so fun. I thought it was a great moment. And yeah, like you said, Cresta, Max jumping up and down. They are ride or die for each other. That tag team has just come such a long way. And I agree with you, Sean, that, you know, it was questionable a couple years ago. We were worried where Anthony was going to end up. But now he's ending up on my Facebook page on the Savage X Fenty. He's out there modeling, living his best life. So I'm here for him finally getting a little bit more recognition that he deserves well i'll tell you what we're also here for wrestling for about 234 hours tomorrow because as ronald mentions gato and tk going uh 15 matches in for forbidden door damn yeah gato is uh or gato was backstage at dynamite this week as well but action says all of a sudden we got a stacked forbidden door buy-in yeah mogul embassy swerve toa leona bishop khan against rapongi vice and el desperado we have Stu Grayson versus El Fantasmo, who uh, FightfulSelect.com, best $5 in the business, reported was actually in the running to face Punk. We got United Empire, Jeff Cobb, Kyle Fletcher, and TJP, who has been killing it in New Japan, against LIJ, Takagi Bushi, and Hiromu Takahashi. And then, of course, Athena versus Billy Starks. What an insane loaded show. QB says, great show tonight. Once the ink is dry on the Elite's new contracts, will we get the feud of the century? Elite versus Punk FTR, what do you think? Iridian, I'm going to cue you up here because what I have said on a million shows, was it last week I told the Vince Russo story? Mm. Okay. I'm going to tell you guys the story here. In 2016, I worked for Wrestling Inc. And unfortunately, I did a show with Vince Russo. And I did not like doing a show with Vince Russo. In fact, I told Raj Geary, I don't want to compromise my integrity for a person who doesn't have any. And he said, well, it's your job. Do it. I said, okay. And I made the best show that that guy has ever had. I got made an offer by Jimmy Van and Fightful. And I agreed to an amount. And I was very excited to be away from Vince Russo. Not realizing that Jimmy Van was also negotiating with Vince Russo to bring him aboard because he liked our chemistry and our show. After that, I said, okay, I'm not really okay with this, but what I'll do is can I will do this, but you're going to have to pay me more money. Mm. If I were the elite, whether I liked CM Punk or not, 
I would leverage this situation into a lot more money. You got people in WWE that are getting three, four million dollars a year. You got people in AEW, three, four, five million a year. The number that I heard for them is way lower than that based on what they came in on. But it's a lot more than what WWE offered them at the time, too. In fact, it might have been up to two times what WWE offered at the time. So if I were them, I would, whether or not I wanted to work with this guy in the future or not, I would say, listen, I'm going to need a lot more money <laughs> to do this. I would even play it up. Even if I was completely fine with it, I'd be like, you know, he really put me at risk. I don't know. It's it's going to take a lot of convincing. You leverage it. You make, you make. Now, I know I probably shouldn't be telling two people that I pay this at all before you all manufacture a fight and start biting each other and shit. I have to work with Joe Pearl and watch Impact every <laughs> week. So now let's talk about it. I'm glad you brought this up. <laughs> She's getting the Draymond Green deal now, where now I got to trade Jordan Poole off my team. Oh my gosh. Iridian, yeah. do you think that we'll see this if these deals play out? Negotiating 101, always ask for more. It doesn't matter. I think that the Bucks should get a huge payout for this, for dealing with Punk in the first place, and then having a fight with him still. You know, I think that this is a match that people want to see. So why not ask for more money? I feel like they would also pay Punk a lot of money. And is it a match that we're going to get soon? I don't think so. I don't think so because they're still working things out. People are still bringing up lawyers. I feel like maybe we give it a year or two. Maybe this could be next <laughs> year's all out. I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to take for people to hash things out. But I think that this is such a missed opportunity if they don't do it because people want to see it. And we saw the crowd reaction tonight. We saw how people treat the elite in Chicago. So maybe, maybe we shouldn't have it in Chicago. Maybe we need like a neutral territory. I don't know where that would be, but I definitely agree with you that. Yeah. Ask for money, ask for more money. Did you say five mil? That, I, listen, I would love if they, I would love if next year's all in was in Toronto at the Sky Dome because it places my second home. But Cresta, do you think we're ever going to see this feud? I agree that it would be a waste of money to not do so. And plus, everybody's going to get paid. I'm totally like last guy. Last time I wrestled this guy, I fractured a toenail. I couldn't sleep for weeks. I was upset. I'm going to need you to add four more zeros onto that because you know it's going to get back to Punky. He's going to get more money. And anyone else who's fodder or around that food, FTR going to get paid. Mm -hmm. Starks is going to get paid. Dan housing going to get paid. It's good for everyone. In my opinion, again, I know this much about the situation. It couldn't have been that deep that Tony Khan literally made a whole separate show for you. Just, I would ask for more money. I agree with you, Sean. I'm asking for more money. Four times whatever you said, and I'm going to need double extra. And I want filet mignon every week. I just want to, I don't usually like to highlight stupid comments, but somebody said, comparing Punk to Russo is a bit dodgy for my liking. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was. I wasn't comparing the situations and, and leveraging money at all. Uh, so uh, you're out of here, buddy. You're out of here. I'm like an umpire that's just ejecting people. Get out of here. We need that uh, soundboard that says, brother, this guy stinks. <laughs> Hold on. Let me, let me see what I got here. Here's what I got. Dog, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> there we go. There we go from our friend Righteous Red. Check him out on Grapsity every Saturday here on Fightful. Those guys are killing it. He and Phil, uh, they will be on Ask Grapsity this Thursday on FightfulSelect.com. We do have actual collision to talk about, uh, <laughs> uh, but Nick says, hey, y'all, not sure uh, I was seeing something, but I swear I saw something that looked like a mannequin. In the crowd in one of the seats. Any validity to this or am I taking crazy pills? Did anybody else notice that? Mm -mm. Somebody in the chat, it. let me know. Send me a picture, something. I'll, I'll try to Get find Joel it out. Get Joel Pearl on the line. <laughs> Joel Pearl back. It was just Joel because <laughs> Joel is a dummy. There we go. Uh, we had the opening segment, which was very, very weird to me. Because Tony Schiavone's out there, Cresta, and Tony says, oh, we're going to find out who the partner is. And Chris Jericho interrupts 
And is like, I'm not worried about it. Sammy's not here. Minoru and I are friends. They got a secret handshake. But then he's like threatening Tony Schiavone to tell him who the partner is. I'm like, bro, all you had to do was not come out and you would have found out. Did this strike you as weird at all? This is Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho does be doing things. <laughs> I like it, but it, I mean, it's true. I mean, first of all, getting a special handshake with Suzuki, mm, you're the guy cool. for that because he doesn't smile. Nothing's funny. And that's he's beating I, you up. When I did the GCW show last year, I walked in the back. It was raining. It was, I think it was raining a little bit. And I walk in the back and just sitting by the door with a cigarette is Minoru oh. Suzuki just smoking before his match. It was fantastic. Uh, 10 out of 10. <laughs> we eventually find out Iridian. The partner is Tetsuya Naito, which is a big name to bring in there. Things ended kind of awkwardly. Jericho just leaves and pounds the bat. This is a very weird segment to me. I, I feel like it could have been laid out a little bit differently. But what did you think? You know what? Jericho came out really aggressively for a man that was wearing a really cute jacket. Um, I think I have that jacket in my closet right now, actually. It was very disco ball-esque, very Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. So I I think I kind of got uh, a little spoiler from Twitter because, you yeah. know, it was said that, you know, somebody announced, you know, Naito was doing the meet and greets. And I was like, yeah. oh, man, this is... Uh why am I on Twitter? Like, sometimes this is why I feel like deleting Twitter, because this ruins everything. And people were chanting. The crowd knew that Naito was going to come out. And before his song did, he sh everybody was cheering. Sure enough, he did. And, man, he came out looking like a billion dollars. That man was so fresh. I have never seen any amazing that outfit like this. was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. tailored. I know that man was out there last minute still tailoring up things. And, ooh, it was... It paid off. It paid off. He looked incredible, and the crowd was loving it. Tetsuya Naito. Cresta, I love this. I love him being a part of this match. Sting, I mean, no matter what Sting's involved in, I'm going to be interested in. He was my first favorite wrestler ever. But I think this is an appropriate level of stardom to have in here. I agree with that. And as someone who didn't see the pain maker Jericho in New Japan, knowing that this is the guy who told Jericho, hey, knock it, knock it off. Knock it off. You're doing a lot, old man. Is really interesting <laughs> because Jericho's been taking L's left and right in AEW. Yep. And I mean, within this character, as you should, because you were being a jerk last year, OD. So I like it. It's a right, correct level of stardom. I can't wait to see how this turns out because I couldn't tell you who's going to win or lose this. Mm -hmm. We got the Miro promo. Man, I always loved these vignettes, and this one was, was no different. This one was a lot more focused on him. No music, no nothing. It was just him talking. And he, t he used to answer to his God, but now he says he's renounced his God and his super hot wife. Uh, I, I saw people immediately tweeting me, saying, well, that means Lana's coming in. I know she's expressed interest in the past, but I don't know if there's there's any plans. Uh, Miro just came off of his longest in-ring hiatus of his career. And I, I think that he's always been this guy that I, I will believe in these situations already. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He is a man of his word. I was very unsure of what the promo was leading to, but then he pulled a Batista. He said, I don't need anyone. I walk alone. I don't even need my wife. I don't need a God. I'm he's freelance now. So I don't know what they're going to do with that. But uh, it's interesting that you mentioned Lana because I was kind of always hoping that when Miro debuted, like we were going to get her and I'm like, Oh, Oh, well, even if she came out as a manager, she doesn't have to wrestle. Like she could just cause chaos around the ring all day. But yeah, man, Miro, and it's going to be interesting to see where he goes from this. It's only week two, and now he doesn't have a god, and he's pulling this stuff. So I, I don't know where we're going with this. Who knows? Cresta, are we seeing incel Miro? I mean, Bobby be Lashley did take his wife, so. It'd be, but if he renounces them, it'd be voluntarily celibate Miro. It's Valsel Miro. But he's already had sex, so he's not. Uh, you can still be celibate. You can like be celibate for a period of time. This sounds like Steiner math, and I'm too pretty for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, Scorpio Sky is too pretty for the lights, apparently. He just does this, and the whole lights shut off. 
He says that he's going to show people a lot better than any video can. Much like Miro, he is now facing the longest in-ring hiatus of his career. And he's been healthy for a very long time. I saw him in November. He's like, I'm good. I'm healthy. I'm fine. He hasn't been on the road. He, he was surprising Cresta to a lot of people that he wasn't backstage at the LA shows earlier this year. But uh, what do you think of Scorpio Sky heading back? The fact that he was gone for so long was malarkey. The last thing I remember him with was Dan Lambert and that top flight thing that oh, kind of just said, I don't know where they went or whatever they ended up doing. So the fact that he was healthy and that creative had nothing for him, I guess you could say. Same thing with Miro. I'll even go ahead and say Brian Cage. Yeah, he's doing things now in Ring of Honor, but these three guys, I don't see how they weren't doing things. You know, there wasn't anything for them to do. You know what I mean? So I'm happy he's back. Can't wait to see. And um, I think Aleister Black is going to be very, I'm sorry, Malachi Black is going to be very upset mm -hmm. that you keep doing the light thing because that's his gimmick. So, Well, he did it tonight too, and it, it led to nothing. But Iridian, uh, AEW's got to keep somebody by that damn light switch between Sabu running around, Malachi Black, Dark Order used to pull this shit, and now we got... Now we got Scorpio doing it. This isn't okay. You know what? This this light gimmick needs to be stopped passing around. Like, have somebody do it, some dedicated person, and then we can move on with our lives. Scorpio Sky not being used for the longest time, especially after being healthy, is a crime. Okay? It's a crime. This man is so good. The last, li literally the last thing I remember him is with Christopher Daniels. So that was a long time ago. And... Poor, poor dude. That's all I can say. Poor dude. But like, let we have a show on Saturday now, so let's use him. A reminder, guys, uh, FightfulSelect.com brings you exclusive news multiple times a day. Uh, we saw Soraya later on this show. Fightful Select reported that she would be back imminently. Doug says, I just got out of the show. What a mixed reaction for Punk. Can't wait for tomorrow night for Forbidden Door 2. Yeah, uh, that mixed reaction was very, very unique. And it's something that I like. I just love that. If they're making noise, it's a positive for me. They were making noise for Hiroshi Tanahashi. He defeated Swerve Strickland. Swerve worked over the leg heavily in this match. And I feel like if MJF wasn't world champion right now, we'd be talking about Swerve being in that talk within the next year, year and a half. I actually liked the botch at the end of this match where Tanahashi fell off the top rope, which I don't think was intentional, but he had his leg worked over so much. And Swerve, who is just a consummate professional Iridian, ran up to the top rope and was like, just punch me, punch me, punch me, knock me back down, hit the move. I thought all this worked well. Now they're rocking Tanahashi until his damn wheels fall off. This man is just going to keep going until he can't anymore. And uh, this match, I thought, was a really good way to kick off uh, this show. And we got people saying his knees are shot. Oh, you best believe MJF is working those legs tomorrow. Mm, absolutely. And you know what? That was a little scary to see because you could tell that, oh, man, this wasn't, this wasn't in there. He actually slipped. And the quickness of Swerve to get up instead of laying there and just going up to um, to him, it was just, man, such quick thinking. And it made for a really, really good pin at the end because it was believable. You're like, oh man, this was so quick and I can't wait to watch him fight MJF. And I was a little worried about how Tanahashi was going to look against MJF because they are very different styles um, and there is an age difference, but... I'm very excited for this match tomorrow now because, you know, this match was really great, especially to be the first match of the night to hype up Forbidden Door. What'd you think about this one, Cresta? This was uh, definitely, uh, it was past versus future, so to speak. So don't hate me, but I'm not really familiar with Tanahashi's work. But hmm. tonight I really enjoyed his match. I am, however, frustrated with Strickland's booking. I think that I'm kind of tired of seeing him lose or I need him to finish up this story with Keith Lee. He has great matches, but I I kind of feel like it's rudderless. Am I alone in this? But I, I'm frustrated with his booking. I didn't notice that Tanahashi legitimately fell. I thought it was just great wrestling. But now that you've told me that, I'm like, I think Strickland's <laughs> great. I'm just, I'm frustrated with his booking. Yeah. And, and that's... 
now that he's on Forbidden Door, I mean, I think they'll probably get the win, but and my God, do his partners need that too? The, his partners really need that because you know that they're going to lose. And they look like a million bucks all they the time. They look great they, as a group, yeah. They yeah. look great. But yeah, I think that he needs some more direction. Like, why has the Keith Lee match not happened yet? They need to be put together in that blind tournament. And I kind of hope they go far in the blind tournament together mm -hmm. because they were a great team. But then that match finally has to happen. It finally has to happen. Yeah. I'm overwaiting for it. Fancher says, wasn't a fan of Tanahashi Swerve. Good wrestling, good storytelling, but the chemistry didn't feel there. Feels mm -hmm. like some spots didn't work between them. I may be in the, I may be in the minority. I mean, to me, I kind of like it when a fight is messy because that's how fights are. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, it's not the Sky Dome anymore, Sean. Uh, go to hell, Rick D. It is always the Sky Dome. <laughs> you corporate shill. I will not call it the Rogers Center. Thank you for watching. MJF cuts a promo afterwards and he's like, nah, I'm not going to be there. I'm, I'm not going to be in Toronto tonight. I'm going to show up tomorrow. We're the opening match of the pay-per-view. That's fine. That makes sense. It gives you a little bit of a lay of the land there. I'm fine with that. Any any thoughts on that, that opening, Cresta, as opposed to going on later? AEW world title match. I've always heard in the wrestling business, you either want to go on first you want to go on last it is a little strange that you are the world champion the biggest prize in the game going on first but you know what you're the champion champion's prerogative i do mm -hmm. wish that it wasn't kind of a foregone conclusion and i am not going to be upset if tadahashi pins mjf because i don't know i want more i want another layer for mjf's character i know it's not gonna happen but if he does i'm going to cackle you're gonna hear me from where you are you're gonna hear me cackle because i'm gonna get a good laugh it's not gonna happen but if it does <laughs> it's gonna be great Cresta, but he said he didn't want to stay with the rest of the indie jabrones like he said i'm gonna go first and then i'm gonna leave i'm gonna get my check and that's it i did think it was very rude that he did not show up like you're gonna let your music play for a hot minute and then the screen came up i was like sir please you are the champion at least show up but i get it you know he just made his appearance on rampage they got this man working overtime he's the champion he, you should be working overtime he, he was like i'm not he's like no i'm too tired i'm not showing up that's it this isn't for me he really pulled the i already did something today mm -hmm. line my god bizarro big l says sean happy anniversary of denise's wwe booking of quizzle mania that screwed will and gave you the win hashtag justice for will collision is setting itself apart uh the style is great interviews did well for for did well throughout diverticulitis is my new name for the f5 for those of you who don't know on the new AEW Fight Forever game, the F5 is called the diverticulitis, which is the illness that Brock Lesnar had. Yeah, it's been called that in a couple other games, I think. But I've been playing the game. It's very, very fun. Uh, I I also like Collision, and uh, Denise's booking of that Quizzlemania was abysmal, and that's why I gave Will the title. I accepted my championship, but I, I gave it to Will. Coy Stalling says, my opinion is that Nick Wayne and Swerve will be where Swerve gets wins. Quite possibly. I think that Nick Wayne and Swerve are about to kick off a big feud that ties Swerve back in with Darby Allen, uh, Cage back in, a, a lot of stuff like that. And I think we're going to see probably Swerve, Cage, and one of the, the members of the embassy against Nick Wayne, Sting, and Darby along the way as well. We got Andrade El Idolo defeating Brody King. Julia Hart's out there, but we got a DQ thanks to Buddy running in. I'm not big on the DQ booking. Iridian, how do you feel about that? I, I got so used to AEW almost never having DQs. You know what? That's crazy. I had never noticed that AEW isn't really big on, on their DQs, but I was excited to see the figure eight again. And I was like, oh, no, Andrade's hit, and he's still giving it everything he has. And I was like so proud of him. And here we go. Buddy comes out and ruins everything per usual. And you know what? If it would have been Julia, I don't think I would have had such a big problem with it. But I'm like, come on, guys. Are we really doing this again? I feel like now we're working up to him finally going against Malachi. And I feel like he had big, bad Brody beat. He really did. It, it just he, one more second. I feel like maybe they should have given him the win and then they, they could have come out. I think that would have been better. 
Cressa, how'd you feel? Um, first, I want to give a big shout out to Kevin Kelly, who acknowledged that last week he butchered Andrade's name. He said, thank you for all the subs to a language course. Mm -hmm. And I respect Kevin Kelly because sometimes you just got to acknowledge what was going on. <laughs> it was bad. He messed it up like four times, too. It was it, pretty bad. It was different every time. I put a little razzle dazzle on it. I respect mm -hmm. it. <laughs> and you know what? But today he was still calling him uh, Andrade. He said Andrade a couple times. Andrade. And I said, you know what, sir? It's okay. You'll get it next week. He's trying. He's trying. He, he even admitted in another match, I'm not really familiar with this young man's work. Maybe you can fill me in. So I respect him for trying. We all got to start somewhere. Overall, the match itself was good. To me, it's leading like... Do y'all want to adopt him into the House of Black? You kept stealing his lucha mask, and I think he'd be a great fit. But also, I would like to see Andrade do something on his own that is meaningful. Mm -hmm. I think that... <clears throat> Sorry, in every iteration that I've seen Andrade since I've been watching in 2018, he's never had anything super meaningful for super long. And it's kind of frustrating because yep. he's one of those talents where he's so good. And the fact that he's pulling off a figure eight, I'm not even mad I at it. it. I'm not. It looks great on him, too. And of all the people to pull from, it's iconic. Everyone knows who it's from. And you're iconic on your own. But I, he's an amazing wrestler, an amazing luchador. I, it's just criminal the way that sometimes he's not able to fly on his own and do his own thing. Even with, um, I'm not going to try to butcher their name, Los Ignobles. I'm not saying it Los again. Los Ignobles. That, that one. Come on now. That one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, and my, the way I look at this is like, I get Brody King is a force and all that stuff, but he, he lost to Daniel Garcia earlier this year he lost to darby mm -hmm. back in august he lost to moxley now a couple of those were refs decisions but andrade could have beat him andrade absolutely could have beat him there's no reason not to and ian hunter says between lfi and aew and lij around tonight no one helps andrade seems odd thought it would be lfi versus house of black me too where are all of andrade's friends exactly we fake friends you have so many people backstage nobody's coming out to help him so if nobody's coming out to help him is he gonna get misted like come on no somebody. wonder where he wants to go Roosh? back to wwe where was Roosh, bro Roosh never loses where was Roosh? where was alex the assistant mm. cody says give andrade the rick flair theme <laughs> robe and strut of all the people that have been given that well one i think charlotte fits it very well because obviously Yes. Like she is her father's daughter and she fits it really well. But of all the dudes that they've had and given that to, I think Andrade fits the best. Uh, <laughs> I, I just, I, you know, I like that. But uh, we've got just an outstanding promo, I thought, with Christian Cage, who comes out and acts yes. like he won the TNT championship. And I saw Will Washington tweet, TNT and they were like hey change your bio because their bio says Luchasaurus is our champion it looks like Christian Cage is the champion and he talks about how he was in Toronto and he goes he goes off on the Maple Leafs which is brutal brutal even as a new Maple Leafs fan I'm already finding out what being a Maple Leafs fan is about you get to the playoffs then you'll lose in the playoffs mm -mm. And I just thought, Cresta, that this was heel work 101. He did none of the work and took all of the credit. This wasn't even a group project. And he's still taking credit for it, Cresta. Joel and Christian Cage proving everyday Canadians aren't nice. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> he's freebirding the TNT title. How? How? Like, yeah, pushed old boy off the top and bit Wardlow and all that stuff. But at the same time, you literally did none of the work. You have Luchasaurus lifting you up. It's giving Jungle Boy, like, the same guy that you hated, the same guy you're like, I'm glad your dad hates you. Ah, that same guy, Evil Turtleneck, Christian Cage. This is, this is kind of iconic. This is peak heel work. Like, I don't have to do anything. And again, I have to go back to Luchasaurus being prehistoric. His brain is very small. I would be offended, <laughs> especially at the end when he said, if anyone wants to challenge me, I mean, we. Like, bro, I would have been like, wow, but also dinosaurs don't speak English, so I can't be too bad. I don't know. I don't know what Luchasaurus is going to do. Eventually, he's going to get mad or not. I don't know. Mm -mm. Iridian, how did you feel about this? Uh, Christian said that he left in a bad mood because he knew he was coming to Toronto. 
what a goofball. You know, I thought he was going to come out and really, like, he was over. People loved him. People were like, oh, my God, yeah, Christian. And then he's like, because I knew I was going to come here, and now I'm in a bad mood. Like, sir, come on. And then he starts talking about a completely different sport, not even wrestling. I was so confused. I was like, what is going on What here? a heel. What a heel. I was like, what are you even talking about? It's not making any sense. And then, yes, it was like, he stole Jungle Boy's gimmick. Now he's on the shoulders of Luchasaurus. Jungle Boy used to do that. You're going to tell me that now it's going to be you looking silly with the championship above you. And then he's like, yep, we're not going to do, you know, we're not going to do how, what we were doing before. No more open challenges. He's like, I'm the champion. I worked so hard. And I said, you didn't do anything. You did nothing, sir. Except to, oh my God, I'm so frustrated by this. I mean, I love Christian, but this man frustrates me to no limit. It. He's in your skin. I... He's in your veins. <laughs> yep. I mean, I'll clap for him, but then I'm like, oh, darn you, Christian. I love it. Guys, get in your super chats. Get in your humper chats. You get your question or statement right on the air, and you support us here at Fightful. Uh, if that's not enough for you, we got multiple Q&As up on FightfulSelect.com this week. Jimmy Van will be filling in for me, and then we've got Ask Grapsity as well. But Brent Lockman says, thank you, TK, for resisting booking House of Black versus House of Torture. No one on earth wanted that. Well, yeah. Uh, Powerhouse Hobbs beat the absolute breaks off of, uh, I believe it was Chance Profit, a Nightmare Factory project. Uh, Chance got a little bit of offense, but Powerhouse needed to whip some ass here, Cresta. So I feel good about Powerhouse whipping some ass. Sometimes you just got to remind people that these guys are big sons of bitches that can do cool moves. I had to literally look for that in my notes because <laughs> it was like oh, one line of like, he did beat somebody up. And my literal note is, I foresee a squash rip. <laughs> Poor guy. Poor guy. They wrote his name. And then by the time I finished writing his name, the match was over. He tried. He tried. Mm. Powerhouse looked great. So good for Powerhouse. He looked, he looked real great. Poor guy, though. <laughs> Iridian. I'm the same as, as Cresta. I had two lines on this um, in my notes. And then I had to like really squint because I'm like, where where did that happen? Um, I wrote that it was a minute long, which was very interesting. And I had to almost close my eyes for this one because he was like ragdolling this poor man who I'm sorry, I did not write his name down. I don't know who he was, but I wrote demolish that poor man. That, Jeremy that Prophet. Oh, threw okay. him up in the air and hit him with a spine buster. I love it. Like He, he had him like this. He was like this. And I was like, like when you see a bully just guy. beating up a little kid, it's like, yo, stop it. Put him down. Stop. <laughs> Absolutely ragdolled him. I thought it was good. Sometimes you need a big, badass move like that. I, I just, I really like that. Yeah. We have, uh, speaking of powerhouse, he, Dustin Rhodes, Ricky Starks, Juice Robinson, Kojima, Punk, Roderick Strong, Samoa Joe, all in an Owen Hart Cup video, which uh, that has kicked off. And it kicked off. Tonight on the women's end, well, it didn't kick off tonight. It kicked off last night. But Willow Nightingale defeating Nyla Rose. I loved the finish to this. The gut wrench power bomb, the doctor bomb on Nyla is one of those cool things to see. Uh, Iridian, Willow is perpetually over. She's always going to be over. People are going to always root for her. How did you feel about this uh, first round Owen Cup tournament match? Man, this was great. Uh, Willow came out looking so strong. Literally, she picked up Nyla. It was the craziest thing that I have witnessed. She literally picked her up so high in the air and then dropped her. I was so impressed. And I feel like with Willow, when you're watching her wrestle, you really feel happy. And I feel like that doesn't happen when you watch a lot of wrestlers. You really get you know a happy, joyful experience. And it doesn't matter who she's fighting. And I think that's really special when you can find that in a wrestler. And she just has that from the moment her music hits. I think Willow is just such a special talent. And I'm super excited um, to, to see more of her. What I didn't like about this match was that Marina Shafir came out with Nyla and I don't think that Nyla needs her. I feel like they keep pairing up Nyla with a lot of different people, but Nyla's always the one that's the star either way. So unless they're really planning on making um, Shafir a really big proponent, um, you know, in the division, then I feel like what's the point, but back to Willow. I love Willow 10 out of 10. What did you think about this, Cresta? Uh, 
Marina is somebody I think is going to come into her own an awful lot more. We saw Soraya show back up. FightfulSelect.com, best $5 in the business. Please subscribe. Reported that she was backstage at Dynamite this week. She's been uh, out of action for a little while, has been sidelined. Uh, we saw we saw them get fought off, and then the heels were like, they, they got weapons. What's going on? Oh, what's going on? And Nyla shouted out, shut up, moose liquor, to somebody in the audience, which I feel like you could have appreciated. I mean, we love Canada, or do we? I guess we don't. <laughs> I will say, if you guys have watched my Impact show, y'all know how I feel about big, meaty women slapping meat. Mm -hmm. You rarely see Nyla Rose get manhandled. Mm -hmm. And it was on since Willow pounced her. Willow pounced her the way Adam Cole got pounced by Keith Lee. Mm -hmm. I popped. Willow Nightingale has baby face star all over her. The match itself was good. And to Iridian's point, I think Nyla Rose is a star in her own right. And I would like it if someone like Marina Shafir did get the rub, but it, it just, I don't know why it just never ends up being that way. Nyla's just like, I'm trying, I'm, but they like me, girl. What can I do? I'm popular. I'm a popular girl. So, I mean, I would, I didn't think Nyla was going to win. I would like something more meaningful to happen to Nyla eventually, but maybe soon. This was great for Willow. Um, I can't wait to see maybe Willow versus Athena. I can't wait for that. So if that's what this is heading to, I know how Kate feels on Thursday, but I don't watch Ring of Honor because that's too much wrestling for me. <laughs> Not that it's bad, I, so. I kind of felt like they could have done a four-way <laughs> with the New Japan Women's Champion, AEW, TBS, and ROH Women's Champion. Wow. And they could have made that like a big premium match and said, uh, you know, it's, it's not a non-title match, but it's a match where that's one where bragging rights matters. Mm. So I think Athena says, how, would beat up everybody. <laughs> yeah. Somebody says, how come no one ever interviews Wyndham ever? Well, I mean, l l let me know the next time you got Bray Wyatt on the horn and tell him that I want to do an interview with him. I don't kind of, how am I supposed to answer that? Sean's like, Let me just why haven't you asked Vince? Shadow Realm, Yugi. Mm. <laughs> Sean, why haven't you asked Vince about the allegations? Ah, gee, mm -hmm. I wonder why. You got his number? Mm -mm. Crossing the Let multiverse here. Crossing ah. the multiverse. Come on. Hey, Sean, let me talk to you right quick. Shut up. Yeah. Hangs up on you. <laughs> ah, God damn it. The guns and Bullet Club Gold oh. are now one and the same. They are together. As reported by FightfulSelect.com a couple of weeks ago. If y'all aren't paying that $5, what, what do you think you're doing? And if you don't have $5, steal it from someone. Go to the cemetery and start digging them up and just raiding wallets. Pull $5 out of there. Get a bank account because we don't take cash. Listen, if you don't want to go that far, steal your grandmother's credit card. Just do that. Commit identity fraud. Yep. Mm -mm. I better not get buried with my money. Y'all better take, like, mm -mm. Sean, who is Michael being buried? <laughs> I'm federal gonna, I'm gonna do... or federal time, y'all. Listen, how do you know? Not mm. if you don't get caught. Mm. I'm not telling this week on FightfulSelect.com alone, we had a collision scoops thread. We had more on Anthony Bowen's segment from Rampage. We had the update on Soraya. Uh, we have news on who is scheduled for London, even though they're not booked on the pay-per-view as well. We have a bunch of the changes to the June 23rd SmackDown because it got Vinced again. Speaking of getting Vinced, we tell you what really happened with the world title match on Monday because there was some incorrect stuff going around out there about... Triple H not wanting Ciampa to lose. That wasn't true at all. We've got what's what's uh, what really happened on FightfulSelect.com. We got who's not going to be in London. We got some impact news about Josh Alexander as well. Uh, some spoilers on the front runners for Money in the Bank winners. We had the news that uh, John Morrison was signing with AEW. We had news on Mickey James getting cleared as well. Uh, a top AEW star who's been working banged up. We talked to Nova, a very rare interview uh, with him. Talked about an AEW star who's going to be off TV for a week. A lot of Forbidden Door news, Nick Wayne news as well. 
uh, CM Punk and Kenta. We had the story on what happened there, why it changed, why it is not happening at Forbidden Door, and we had the news on who else was in the running for it. Uh, this week, WWE announced a PLE for Indianapolis. We have like the how and why of WWE PLE announcements, why they've been waiting until closer to the shows to announce those as well. That's just in the last five days. We also have reaction to the Collision promo from CM Punk, a lot of the next plans that happened for Collision last week as well, and we had a bunch of stuff ahead of Raw. That is just completely separate of the 40-plus uh, podcasts we have there a month and uh we got a we got a wwe heavy week next week as well so fightfulselect.com best five dollars in the business it's My a deal friend. it it really is a deal because look at all the other things that we're paying for that are over five dollars netflix right. Hulu. you, what are you all can't the- buy yourself a little sody pop for a dollar 25 a week anymore this this aquafina i'm drinking that costs more if you buy one of these a week it's going to cost more than Fightful Select. And you need wrestling news more than you need water. It's been proven. Cresta did a study. Mm-hmm. And I'm a doctor. I'm a scientist. She is. I went to the she University is. of Google. In fact, this facial hair that you see grew out of my face. There you go. The Guns joined Bullet Club Gold officially, as FightfulSelect.com reported. A huge win for them. They defeated CMFT Ricky. Uh, Cash Wheeler, man, he just went crazy during this match. This was wild. This was all over the place. But let's be real. Everybody's talking about CM Punk. Cody Bondra says, why'd they boo Punk tonight? He's a baby face. Mm, is, he he though? is he though? Mm. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Punk is so polarizing. And if you think about it, boos are nothing but cheers from ghosts. So were they really booing him? Was it really mm. bad? That's a very good point. Andrew says Punk Booze had 97 Brett vibes. Ratings prediction. I I mean, Cresta was closest last week. Mm. Congratulations on your chicken nugget, Cresta. Chicken nugget. So, so (laughs) Cresta, we're leaving it to you. All right. If I look at my last time I did 808, and tonight was a really good show. Hate him or love him, that match was so good. Everything that was, mm, I'm a go. I would be a little spicy. I'm gonna say 904. 904. What? I'm I'm thinking 730. I'm thinking 730. I'm saying 904. I'm sticking mm. with. I'm locking those lyrics of I'm gonna, show. I'm gonna say 708. Okay. All right. Am you're I going missing low something? again. I feel like you know what? The only reason I'm going lower is because I feel like last week it was the first show. People felt that they needed to watch, and this week they're like, maybe we can watch it the next day. That's yeah. the only reason. Axel Hunter says the great. Oh, me too. But I mean, it, the first show always does big numbers. Yeah. Axel Hunter says the crowd tonight made one thing clear. It's not just punk selling those tickets. Great to see Ricky finally be elevated in this whole thing. Ricky Starks is so very clearly a star. I'm glad that he got an awful lot of shine in this situation. I feel like he's been getting his ass whipped a little bit too much of late Iridian. Yeah. But how have you felt about Ricky Starks performance of late? Oh man, Ricky Starks is like like you said, such a star, and you can see it. I was I thought it was really funny that people were booing anything uh, FTR did, anything that CM Punk did. But as soon the only other cheer that I heard tonight besides the CM Punk was for Ricky Starks. So Ricky, you're doing something right. The little dance he does on the ring that is hilarious. Okay, Ricky is so serious but unserious, like and and funny. I feel like he can sell everything so well. And I'm really hoping that in the Owen Hart tournament that he goes all the way because this would be a huge opportunity for him. I feel like this whole fight with Jay White and with Juice is like there, but really going nowhere. So I feel like the Owen Hart tournament is where Ricky, this is your time to shine. I'm here for it. The girlies are here for it. Cresta, are you here for it? Absolutely. (laughs) So uh, Bullet Club Gold getting a big, big win here. And this is one I think they needed to get Cresta because they, I wouldn't say they've been perpetually beat, but Jay White comes in. He was in the IWGP Heavyweight Championship match at Wrestle Kingdom this year. This year he was in that. And now he's just kind of been around and doing stuff. This is a big win. It may have been a collision opposite CM Punk. CM Punk didn't get pinned, but opposite CM Punk. 
because I wasn't expecting this to happen at all. And to me, if you have the guy who main evented the Wrestle Kingdom show this year, you need to treat him as something special. Agreed. I, I agree with you also in the sense that it was very surprising because I thought CM Punk some way, some shape or form was going to get the pin. To have a win over a CM Punk in any sort of column is fantastic. Um, I agree with Iridian. The only other cheers you heard under the sea of booze was for Ricky Starks, but he was universally cheered. Um Jay White, like you said, being where he was to now kind of milling about. I hope that this keeps up and maybe play up CM Punk getting booed. You don't have to be a winner to get people over or even yourself over. I think keep playing it up. If people keep booing him, have him win where he's cheered and have him lose where he's booed. Give The crowd will go home happy. I think that the in-ring tonight, again, was amazing, but the story was with the crowd. The story was all over the crowd, and whether you like him, or you love him, to quote Tony Schiavone, he puts butts in seats. She like, whether you hate him or you love him, whether you're booing him or cheering him, he puts butts in seats. And it was art. It was cinema. Wrestling cinema. I don't care. I don't care. It was wrestling cinema. If they ever get Punk and Elite on the same page, uh, I don't know how much WWF you all watched in 97, but when they did Shawn Michaels versus Canada, it felt like every other week they were in Canada, even though they weren't in Canada every other week. It was so great because it just, it felt like once a month you would get this insane polarizing reaction. And then the next week, the other guy would get the great reaction. They've got to book it like that. Like I want them to go like, Chicago one week, Canada the next. Go right back to Chicago the next week. You got to go to New York, Austin. Yes. LA has a ravenous crowd and so does Detroit. You go to I those places? The, I just want them to go to punk, pro-punk places and pro-elite places and really like abuse all of this. That's what that's Rachel what I want Kukumunga, so bad. Here we go. Here mm -hmm. we go. Rayan says, I'm enjoying this punk collision run. His merch is already the top selling, and he's getting Cena 11 reactions as top heel and face. To me, Iridian, it is if they're making noise, that's good news. Yeah, you know, uh, a lot of people think that way. <laughs> Not saying it's a good thing, it's a bad thing, but man, the crowd definitely took over. I like the, There was moments in the match that were good, but you could not stop thinking about like oh man looking into the crowd like there was this guy in the front row with the green t-shirt i don't know if you guys noticed him but when they were on the outside fighting this man was like jumping over like he was ready to get in that match and security had to go and be like sir please move back you're you're not in the match here it's this still is not real to him damn it he said uh-uh tag me in he said i'm next but man this this is crazy and you know what they're all crazy characters. Jay White was in there doing yoga. I don't know if you guys noticed while the guns were coming out here. He was on the floor stretching. Did you see CM Punk do the push-ups on the outside too? Like, that was so rude. <laughs> <laughs> they were having fun. And that, that that's great. That's good for them. Yeah. We have a Luis, our great moderator, who uh, is is helping out Drew, who will be our moderator moving forward on Collision. He says Kojima will get a Road Warrior pop tomorrow just based on tonight's reaction to Bunk. Y'all rule. I'm excited because there's going to be a whole lot of people that honestly don't have any idea who Kojima is. They don't know about his history uh, and how great he is, and they're going to love him tomorrow. Uh, and Kojima is still doing great things in all Japan and Noah. I, I haven't been as partial to his new Japan work of late, but uh, all Japan and Noah stuff of late has been good. And I'm very excited for that. Ryan says punk is going to be the top face and heel at once to a segment of the AW audience. Cena 2011 esque reactions, but it cements punk as a number one star in AEW. Mm. I think is objectively a top star. I mean, when you have the WBD executive, calling you one bill fill and again that is in reference to one billion dollars that aew is going to get from warner brothers discovery wow that's it's very very good news irene uh has our last super chat as of right now you can still get them in it says punk's 97 arc is going to rule i need punk and mj have to face off in the ring while the crowd takes a poll on who to boo and what to chant uh, i can't wait but uh you know this this I'm Go sorry. ahead. 
So I was like, so you know what that reminds me of? I wasn't watching wrestling at this time, but people talk about this from legend. When people were sick of John Cena winning, mm. so they had the Miz cash in on him, and people were like, we didn't, we don't want this either, but we don't, we really don't want this either. So that's what it's giving. Because <laughs> people were, re- from what I understand, people were really sick of John Cena at that time, and they were like, oh, so you want anybody? And then the Miz came down, I was like, no, I, I lied, I lied, not anybody, not anybody. <laughs> Uh, so Arena, what did you think of the match itself? We got Switchblade, we got Jay or Ricky losing, yeah. Bullet Club Gold winning. I felt like it was important, but the match I thought was a blast. I thought that it was a, it was a long, good match. And you know, CM Punk wants to have long ass matches. FTR yeah. wants to have long ass matches. Ricky Starks deserves to have some long ass matches. Mm-hmm. It was just fun to watch. It really was. Everyone was doing their own thing, and you can tell they were also having fun. And the fact that I feel like the chemistry that Jay and Juice have together, oh my goodness. When this, they are, they yell at each other. You could hear them in the arena yelling at each other, yelling, Ricky, like, come on. That is so (laughs) funny. You can't tell people don't pop for this. I think that this storyline with Ricky has to go somewhere, but like Jay getting that win, I'm like, man. You're, you're an icon, sir. You really are an icon. He really does it all. And now having Bullet Club Gold have two more members, like, guns need bullets, you know? So I think it it, it makes sense. Um, I want to see what the merch looks like, because if the merch is cute, I might have to get it. I might have to get it. Who knows? Cresta, I'm, I'm interested to, to see how you feel about the guns. I thought Phil Lindsay had a really great tweet today where he said it's interesting because they do all the stuff that their dad's friends did. They dress like Shawn Michaels. They spit water like Triple H. Like they think that the that his friends were cooler than him. Mm-hmm. I mentioned earlier, Charlotte is her her father's daughter. They are definitely their father's sons. Like the body language was, it's hereditary from them. Like they they picked that up well. I think they're better than a lot of people give them credit for, but how do you feel? I'm not really a fan of the gun club, but I don't think that the fans not liking him is his fault or their fault. Rather that's Dan Housen's fault for naming them ass boys. <laughs> and it really, it really screwed them. Cause even in the many men promo, when they had that sauce, like, I cannot believe y'all did this. It was funny, but two seconds later, funny. ass boys, you know, like yep. <laughs> there was not like Dan Housen really got them good. Like with FTR bald and FTR hair. Like, they, he really got y'all gone. He cursed you for real. I don't think that they're bad, necessarily. They remind me low-key, too, of Pretty Deadly. You're young, you're spunky, you're over the top, you're flashy. You, you're right. They do all the things that DX was doing back in the day. But, damn, the ass boys, that's a, that's a rough one to shake. That's a I, real I, rough one to shake. I love that they leaned into it because Dax straight up told me that when he started getting called FTR bald, he was like, this little son of a bitch is making fun of me. And then he was like, you know what? Then I looked at the ass boys and I was like, I can rock with this. Now people on our Patreon call CM Punk FTR tattoo that I love. But hey, listen, if they don't want to be called the ass boys, we'll call them the butt cheek bros and they'll be good to go. I feel like the ass boys is still better than anything else we could call them. Like, could you imagine yeah. uh, on a t-shirt, butt boys, butt like, boy, come on, <laughs> butt boy brigade. The triple B. There we go. <laughs> Drew Nicholas says, you can tell how much punk loves the heat he's getting. This is the punk we need and deserve. Oh, a motivated CM Punk is just what I want. People were like, okay, is it exhausting to cover him? Yes, it's very exhausting to cover sometimes, but he's fascinating to cover. I'm interested in what he has to say, what he's doing, all that stuff. And yeah, of course, he loves it. Jason says, Tony said big things happening at Forbidden Door. What do you think it is? Is it overhype or is something big going to happen? Ooh. Well, okay. I'll, I'll pat our own awards on the back here. He uh, won the Fightful Award last year for event of the year as voted on by our subscribers. And I know that that stuff means a lot to him. Winning those types of awards that are voted on by fans does mean a lot to him. His idea of big and everybody else's idea of big have been proven to be sometimes not the same. So I think that he looks at this really, really good card and he sees it as that. Iridian, do you think that anything like crazy is going to happen? 
You know what? I've been waiting for this pay-per-view solely because I feel like once we get another pay-per-view in the bag, then he announces another pay-per-view, which yeah. I'm now hoping that he's going to talk about all out. I've been waiting for him to be like, all right, Chicago, here you go. Like, come on, it's man. Just, just confirm it. Just tell me when. It, like, I I feel like I know it in the back of my mind, but I just need him to say it. I need him. And I thought he came out in uh, in Chicago like four times on Dynamite. And he was like, Oh man, I love Chicago, and and he took a pause, and I was like, and what? <laughs> and, what? and oh, he he was like, and we have a good card. <laughs> I think right now they're probably just waiting until one that they sell out Wembley, and two that they announce the broadcast plans for it. Because everybody I talk to say it is still happening, and looks like I'll be there that week to do some possibly some interviews based on some other stuff I might hear is coming to Chicago that week. Uh, but it's looking very, very interesting. Uh, Cresta, tell the people what you got going on, where they can find you, all that good stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's always a pleasure hanging out with you here on a nice Saturday with Sean and Iridian. Rick, you're in our hearts. Haha, <laughs> you're at work. Um, Mondays, Wednesdays, and sometimes Fridays, I am live on either Twitch or TikTok at Cresta Star watching wrestling with you. We are doing a community night soon. We are going to be watching Bully Beat Down, one of my favorite shows if oh you guys gosh. don't know what it is it looks like sean knows what it is but a synopsis is people would take bullies to go fight mma fighters back in the early 2000s peak because people would really do it um on thursdays and saturdays i am over here on fightful with joe pearl on thursdays talking about impact and on saturdays i'm here with oridian rick and sean ross i almost forgot who this person was i was just talking to for an hour i love you all crest the star crest of the star on twitter is my link tree and bio. I, I just want to say one of the reasons why I love Bully Beatdown. Um, Jake Shields, the MMA fighter who is just a bigot in every kind of way, was on Bully Beatdown, and he is the only fighter to lose the striking round against the bully. I know exactly what episode you're talking about because you're not talking about the guy who kicked the guy and got disqualified because he knocked no. him out. The other talking guy who the bully was really just taking it to him. He became a world champion in MMA, the the Jake Shields, but he couldn't strike for shit. Man trained with the Diaz brothers, so he was getting peppered all day long, <laughs> all day and night long, and still got his ass whooped by the bully and bully beat down. Iridian, tell the people what you got going on. Well, every Saturday you can find me here on Fightful on the post show. I finally changed my bio. My Twitter and Instagram bio say Fightful now. So I am mad official. You can't tell me anything, okay? Otherwise, you can it. find me on YouTube at Rest Friends. Head over to my Twitter and Instagram at Iridian underscore Fiero, and you will see my link tree there as well. Guys, Rick Chino will be back next week. Uh, Alex and Kate will be doing the post raw show here on Fightful, but we have bonus shows for you next week. We have retro reviews and all that stuff coming to FightfulSelect.com. Uh, Jimmy Van will be having Chris Van Vliet on List in Your Boy. Uh, Ricky Chino will be filling in for me Wednesday on Post Dynamite. Righteous Reg is filling in for me post Money in the Bank. I will be calling in after Money in the Bank uh, to do a brief spot on our post show as well. But I'll be uh, bringing you guys notes from London. I'll be there all week. What's the cat's name? You're muted. What's the cat's name? This one is Rangar. This is the cat who was in <gasps> the knocked closet. over. Yes, she's the worst. She is the worst, and she wants food now. So she's giving me the wop bobble woo bop at my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you all so much. Leave a thumbs up on this video. Comment below your favorite thing. FightfulSelect.com. Subscribe.